is up guys dashing here and live we are for the go home edition of octane that's right my friends we are less than a week away from ascendance 11 kicks off the three-day event does with day one this upcoming thursday the 28th but we have got a jam-packed edition of Octane first and we'll jump in straight into the action as always as we see the Anarchy Champion Peligro making his way to the ring of course he is set to defend that Anarchy Championship of his against Paul Moda at Ascendance 11 day 3 looking to send a message to the former PJ Moon at the expense of RJ Kidd here tonight. Peligro has been exuding immense confidence over the last couple of weeks. Remember, he said he was not only going to beat Paul Moda, kick his ass right back out of CMV. He said he was going to rip his expletive delete face off. Hey, we're a Christian family show here, all right? I'm not trying to get banned by Twitch. But here tonight, it's not Paul Moda that Peligro is sharing the ring with. It is a young and hungry RJ Kid, guys. Coming off the big win a couple weeks ago in that Fatal 4-way. His main roster debut, he got the dub there. Hell of a way to follow it up if he could potentially knock off one of the most dominant Anarchy champions in recent memory, guys. Now, Peligo said himself earlier this week that a year ago, Ascendance 10, his entire life changed in that mask for mask match against his former best friend, Golden Cat, a.k.a. Leon Gata. And he has had a hell of a journey to become the man that he now is. I mean, you compare Danger Cat from Ascendance 10 to Peligro, there's hardly any similarities left. Peligro saying he's worked too damn hard to allow someone like Moda to just waltz in thinking he can take that Anarchy Championship. Peligro saying, you know, I understand Moda went through his own transformation. He's no longer PJ Moon. You know, same thing. Put PJ Moon and Paul Moda side by side. Similarities are not existent. Peligo again saying he's worked too damn hard this past year to allow that Anarchy Championship to slip through his fingers as he's building this historic reign. Certainly kicking things off hot here. Going right after RJ Kidd fires back with a nice calf kick though. Of course, Kidd will be a part of the Slick B Memorial Battle Royal. That's actually going to kick off the action. At Ascendance 11 Day 1, he and 19 others know what's on the line. Not only 
of course paying homage to the one and only Slick B, but the victor earning a mid-card championship opportunity, any mid-card championship they want to challenge for. Post ascendance, huge opportunity for someone like RJ Kidd who takes a bite out of Peligro's finger there. Speaking of, Leon Gata, guys, our main event here tonight. It's champs versus challengers. Mixed tag team action as global champion Chris Diamond and women's world champion Ellie Quinn will take on Chow Rong and Leon Gata. Big old forearm right there. The anti hero off the ropes now. Pooh clocking. Peligro again. Peligro so fired up, ready for this match against Paul Moda. Hopefully, not overlooking RJ Kidd here. He could be looking to take advantage if that's the case. Double boot stomp to the lower back. Ever since winning that Anarchy Championship, guys, towards the start of the season, Peligro has, like I said, been building this incredible raid. Holy shit! And you know Paul Mode is watching. That's what he's got coming his way. Not only is Peligro incredibly athletic and agile, a risk taker, but they've also proven time and again just how archaic he could be. Retaining that championship against the likes of Jason Spade, Ungbjorn, beating the bloody Brit one-on-one. -on -one. one of the more hardcore matches we have seen in recent memory here in CMV. Early pinfall tip, but Peligro, guys, just like that, gets the dub. Not playing around, did I say it or what? Peligro came out here tonight to, to send a message to Paul Moda, who he knows is watching, guys, but I don't think, I don't think that's the message. Peligro's not done. Peligro with a steel chair. And Paul Moda watching. Peligro knows it. A clear message sent right there. Coming up next, my friend, the action continues. Some great action to look forward to here on this edition of Octane. Again, the go-home episode before Ascendance 11, the three-day event, the biggest show in CMB history, kicks off this upcoming Thursday right here. Do not miss it. 
And Rising Star Champion Astrid Stern, we know, set to defend that championship of hers, guys, against Ashley Ray. Now, the two started off having respect for one another. A bit of a budding friendship, even, but last week we saw that put to the test. That tag team bout against Celestina Marquez and Ari Lee. In the end, they did get the win, did Rain and Stern, but arguing throughout the match, many miscommunications. And what we saw once the match was over, Stern, who we very rarely get see get upset, kind of blew Rain off, walked out on him. And it seems like that respect might be waiting ahead of that Rising Star Championship matchup. What up, what up, what up? Well, also coming up here, guys, we know we've got that huge mixed tag team bout in our main event, the Global General. Chris Diamond and Women's World Champion Ellie Quinn against Shaorong and Leon Gata. But we also got up next the Psycho Imperium looking to continue their dominance this week. It's going to be Trevor Hedible and Maverick Flynn taking on the Cousins of Chaos. We've also got Amelia Jones set for action a little bit later on. As Astrid Stern hopes to pick up a last bit of momentum here. Taking on Isabella Almas of the Arsenal. And obviously the Arsenal of Justice over the course of the three-day event that is Ascendance 11. Poised for big-time action. We know Blake Virtue takes on Bloody Justice or rather the Harvester. We'll also see Joy Justice and Miasma a part of that Fatal 4-Way Tornado Tag Team bout for the Women's Tag Team Championship. As well as Amare Rivers taking on the Barbarian in that highly anticipated rubber match. But Isabella Almas seems like she's going to be missing out this year. Not scheduled to compete at the show of shows. So hoping to pick up a big win here on this go home edition of Octane. And a big winner would be to knock off the Rising Star Champion non-title action. Perhaps Almas puts herself in line. For a shot at the belt post ascendance. So here we go at Stern. Hoping to continue to build on her momentum. Going into that defense against Ashley Rain, but not a good start for her here. As we see Alma show off the 18 inch Python's brother. Stomp to the lower back over, quickly caught. Kicked right upside the head. And now a standing moonsault took a little bit too long, though, setting it up and almost able to get out of the way. Okay, not too sure what happened there. Momentary levitation. Good on display by Isabella Almas. <laughs> now off the ropes for the complete shot. Rolls to the outside to Stern. Stays on her with a, an attempted plancha, but Almas able to get out of the way. Look at me split. And Stern just splat. On the floor, back to her feet now, though. Barrage of knees to the midsection, and down goes Almas. Of course, guys, it is a historic three-day event. Ascendance 11 begins this upcoming Thursday, the 28th. Day two to take place on Saturday, the 30th. And day three will be Monday, the 1st of August. You cannot miss any of the three days. We have some incredible action to look forward to. Of course, the card has now been fully posted on our Discord. If you want to submit your predictions, you can check it out. Off the ropes go Stern. Stunner! Gonna catch almost quick pin attempt by the Rising Star Champion. Into the pin, but a two count only. You know Ashley Rain. Watching this matchup as Stern going to try for that standing moonsault again, but once more, almost able to get out of the way. Tries for a Superman forearm smash, does not connect, but does connect with that kick to the side of the head. And now a back suplex. Wait a minute, Vintage Almas. Hips up for the leg drop. Nice combination put together there by the Florida Women's Hardcore Champion. She hits a standing corkscrew sent on. And now goes for a pin of her own. 
Not so lucky. Just a one count for one half of Audia. As now she's going to get funky dropping that leg. Things not looking too good. But the young Astrid Stern going into the biggest matchup of her career thus far. Defending that Rising Star Championship against one of the absolute best female competitors in the game today in Ashley Rain. Oh, Stern counters with a low blow. Okay. Astrid Stern playing a little bit dirty here. That desperation to get the win, not wanting to look weak going into ascendance. Schoolboy powerbomb. Stern going to try to roll to safety. Isabel almost no stand on her. Half Nelson reverse STO. Almost keeps this up, guys. Things not looking too good for Ashton Stern here tonight. Another pinfall attempt. One, two, but that's all she's going to get. Kick to her shoulder. They didn't see that kick coming though from Stern. Pops right back up to her feet. Iris ripping to the corner. Stern going to go for those clotheslines. Not just one, two of them tosses her out of the corner. Head full of steam drops right into the pin. Unable to keep almost down for the count though. Stern. She's got that fire in her eyes. Stabbing knees to the chest. Almost knowing she's in trouble. Dropping to the outside. Looks like Ashton Stern not fixing to give her even a couple of seconds though to recuperate. Staying on her. Super kick. Followed up by a straight jacket German. You hear the track of Almas' neck as she lands on the floor there. Now back into the ring. Not allowing Isabella Almas to run and hide. Lifts her up. Super kick to the gut. Oh, and a throat thrust. Stern. I think she's thinking about it. Going for that stutter, maybe? No. A great combination. Oh, got to be going for the 450. Yes, she is. Picture perfect. One, two, three. Astrid Stern gets the dub. Oh, wait a minute, guys. Look who it is. It's Ashley Rain. Oh, but it looks like she's actually out here to congratulate Stern. So maybe I was wrong. Still respect to be had between these two going into their bow. Wait a minute! Rain! Rain from behind! Blindsiding Astrid Stern! And Rain making it clear these two are not friends. Going into Ascendance 11, the facade comes crashing down. Ashley Rain's in it for herself and herself alone.
Tag team action coming up next, guys. And as I said before, it's been a good week so far for the Psycho Imperium, as we saw. Hunter Quinn and Josh Omega, along with the Prestige, pick up a win a couple of nights ago on Shockwave. And that eight-man tag team matchup. Well, now Trevor Hannibal and Maverick Flynn looking to continue to build on that momentum here tonight as they take on the Cousins of Chaos, guys. Ascendance 11 could be a very big night indeed for the Psycho Imperium. We know Hunter Quinn gets his shot challenging the Earl for the Intercontinental Championship. Country Club rules. We know Trevor Hannibal going to be in the Money to Make Ladder match while Josh Omega and Maverick Flynn both partaking the slick beam of Royal Battle Royal. And I'll tell you what, I know I'm not supposed to be biased, but I don't see how anyone is going to get Maverick Flynn up over the top rope. I think he might be my pick to win that Slick B Memorial Battle Royal. But then you got Sean Kinney going to be a part of that Battle Royal as well. And I can say the same thing about him. While we know that Barmore also said to be a part of the Money in the Bank ladder match. Those Barmore and Hannibal, two of those bigger guys along with the likes of Isaac Richardson. Like I was talking about on Shockwave earlier this week, it's really the most diverse money to make ladder match in CMB history. You've got big old brutes. You've got brawlers. You've got high flyers, risk takers. It's really anyone's ball game there. I don't have a pick, genuinely, for that money in the bank ladder match. <laughs> the things have definitely been turning around for the Cousins of Chaos the last couple of weeks. And for Jeremy Barmore in particular, after a rough start to the season, of course, he picked up that win against Jeremy, uh, did Jeremy Barmore against Isaac Richardson a couple of weeks ago. And then last week here on Octane, we saw the Cousins of Chaos defeat Richardson in a handicap matchup. So, you know, certainly they're trying to keep their momentum at an all-time high going into the show of shows. Look at Barmore. Tossing Hannibal around like it ain't no thing. Here's what I'm talking about, man. Maverick Flynn and Sean Kinney. Gonna be two of the bigger men in that Slick B Memorial Battle Royal. And look, we all know. I know a thing or two about Battle Royals, right? I lasted longest in the Royal Rumble match a couple years ago. And I'm telling you, from experience, I don't know how you eliminate someone the size of Sean Kinney. Someone as massive as Maverick Flynn. He goes for the pin right here. It could be that easy. We of course, saw Maverick Flynn making his in-ring debut last week on Shockwave. And what an in-ring debut it was. Lighting that table on fire. And we saw Trevor Hannibal put Joe Blade through it. Arriving with an exclamation point, you could certainly say. Taking down Kitty with a nasty power. That's Barmore, actually. Ever since they got their haircuts, looking more like twin brothers than cousins. See Hannibal attempting to chop down the giant oak. That is Sean Kitty. To no avail, though. Let's count of six. Have it till 20, so plenty of time. Kitty, though, going to go for a pin. Flynn in to make the save, just being safe, even though Hannibal able to kick out on his own. Still to come, guys, our main event mixed tag team matchup as the Global Headed Out. Chris Diamond and Women's World Champion Ellie Quinn going to team up to take on Shell Wrong and Leon Goddard, even being as big as he is. Barmore showing off his athleticism with that suicide dive. Meanwhile, Flynn getting dropped chest first with the top rope over there. Maverick Flynn can't be used to getting tossed around like that. The Scottish-born superstar with an Irish whip. You know, the last, the last Scottish-born superstar we had here in CMB went on to be pretty goddamn successful. And the one and only Jacob Ziegler, new Hall of Famer. Big old clothesline there from Mavic Flynn. Into the pin. 
Ah, but Barmore makes the save before it's too late. Rushes him with a head, but now Chocolate for control in the collar double tie up. Neither man budging. Lynn, what the hell was that? A modified sit out face buster. Hey, it looked cool. I'll give him that. Only gets him a two count, though. That's Trevor Hannibal. Unable to deal with the absolute power of Sean Kinney. Dragon Screw lays him out, but Barmore from behind. Looking for a Brain Buster, maybe? Delay Brain Buster. Has to get around the referee there. Barmore for the win, but only a two count. Out of the power of Jeremy Barmore for a second. He just made you think again. Holding up someone the size of Maverick Flynn. Well, that delayed Brain Buster now gonna pounce. Ringside, we see Trevor Hannibal working on the left leg of Sean Chinney. Maverick, meanwhile, getting the back body drop. Tries for a stomp straight back up to his feet. Just using himself like a battering ram to take down. Jeremy Barmore, Maverick, now what's he thinking about? Whatever he tries for a counter, big old double axe handle. From the workhorse down goes Sean Kinney. Up goes Maverick. Great deadlift. Running power slam. Barmore stalking him. And we know for what. Oh, but Maverick Flynn saw it coming too. Counters the Barmore to belly attempt. That's free. Excellent reversal by Maverick Flynn. Stomp to the face. Ooh, Chitty's been busted open. Entire forehead is covered in blood. Oh, now Barmore busted open too. Flynn goes to the pin. And it'll keep him Kitty busy. Only gets a two count. Another pounce, Jeremy Barmore. Got that fire lit up under his ass. Reeled in for a Samoan drop is Trevor Hannibal. Robert Flynn about to be taken for a ride. So it's not so fast. Elbow's gonna save him. Oh, Hannibal gets busted open. Everyone at this point except Maverick Flynn bleeding. Wait a minute, Sean Kitty! Sit out, choke slam. Into the pin, Maverick too busy with Barmore. One, two! Luckily, the hardcore king kicks out. Flynn gonna make Kitty pay. Looking for that cross-legged Patella Brain Buster. But before he can even get a one count pin broken up by Barmore. Hannibal sends him in the corner, high knee to the chest, knocks him down. The Psycho and Perry are firmly in control right now. Barmore able to get up out of the corner, but in a two-on-one situation right now with Kitty down at ringside. Hook to the jaw. Omega Driver! Into the pin! The ref too busy with the count out, though. Might have been a three count. Unfortunately, for the Psycho Imperium, this matchup continues. Barmore taken out. Both Hannibal and Flynn. Kitty's just asleep on his feet right now, man. He's on those spaghetti legs. A miscommunication right there as Flynn clobbers Kitty. Meanwhile, Trevor Hannibal with the cloverleaf paint, and that's going to incapacitate Jeremy Barmore, at least for the time being. Close line from Kitty. One. Two, Hannibal, there to make the save just in case. Gonna help out his tag team partner as Barmore beats his chest. Letting the same universe know he ain't out of this fight just yet. Going right after Maverick Flynn, another delayed brain buster. The Scotsman in serious trouble. Barmore from the corner. A spear 
at incredibly close range. One, two, three, and that's a win for the Cousins of Chaos. Jeremy Barmore and Sean Kinney continue to stack that momentum going into Ascendance 11. Maverick Flynn, I think, was done in after that second delayed brain buster right there. Barmore wanted to make sure with the spear. The Cousins are bloodied, but they are victorious here tonight on Octane. Now on to Ascendance 11. They move, and will it be a very, very good event for the Cousins of Chaos? Will Jeremy Barmore become Mr. Money in the Bank? Will Sean Kinney win the Slick Memorial Battle Royal? Time will tell. Coming up next, guys, of course, as is the case for most of the matches this evening, momentum is at stake for both Mr. Green and his associates and Reese Matthews and friends. We know they're set to compete in the hardcore war at Ascendance 11, but the pot was sweetened, guys, by Reese Matthews earlier this week. 
putting Ugbjorn's contract on the line so that if Mr. Green and his associates, of course, now known officially as First Class, if they win the Hardcore War, Reese Matthews will surrender Ugbjorn's contract, meaning that Mr. Green will own the contract himself, so Ugbjorn will become an unwilling participant of First Class, unwilling for sure, as we saw up here earlier tonight before the show started, not happy with Reese Matthews putting his contract on the line without even consulting him. But of course, Mr. Green saying, fair enough, if you win, I will give you your much desired one-on-one -on -one matchup against me because we know Reese Matthews has been feeding to get hands on Mr. Green, but for weeks and weeks and weeks, Mr. Green has continuously pulled the carpet out from under Reese Matthews. Isaiah Matthews is in action later on. Set to take on Paul Devine, actually. Well, here tonight, it is the bodyguard and butler of Mr. Green. Stalwart in action. He'll be taking on Nick Avery. Mr. Green's outfit, man. Where do you even get an outfit like that? I mean, I guess when you're a, a multi-millionaire, you don't really care about the uh, opinions of the sheep. You dress however you want. You dress to impress. Not how it impresses. Maybe not in a good way. The hardcore war at Ascendance 11, first class. Against Reese Matthews, the Cold Stones Creamery, and that man right there, the Spirit Walker, Nick Avery, who's definitely in for a tall task, quite literally, here tonight. Like Reese Matthews said himself last week, Mr. Green, you, in a very short amount of time, you have made yourself a lot of enemies, and we're coming together to kick your ass at Ascendance 11. Here tonight, it is stalwart Nick Avery, one-on-one. -on -one. We got the peanut gallery in the corner of stalwart. You want to talk about outfits? Look at what the fuck Bulk Bogan is rocking over there. What the hell is that shirt? <laughs> That's got to be one of the most hideous shirts I have seen in my life. Good Lord. And here's a tweet from... Bloody Justice guys who says you keep mentioning Harvester dashing. Are you not scared to see what he can do? Well, I'm not the one that's going to be in the ring with him. Blake Virtue is, so. I'm going to be far away and safe over here behind my announce table. Let's just say I do not envy Blake Virtue come Ascendance 11. Big old knee to the gut of Stalwart. Seemed to hurt Avery more than it actually hurt Stalwart, though. <laughs> oh, blinded with the snake eyes. I think you can see that Stalwart, along with the Bogan Bros, wearing these new armbands. I think that says, if my eyes do not deceive me, my eyes aren't the best, but I'm pretty sure they say property of Mr. Green. Mr. Green ensuring that his posse represents first class as they are going by now. Look at this beautiful cross facing right in front of Mr. Green, able to counter out of it though, Stalwart. DDT, so you think the speed of Nick Avery just too much for Stalwart to handle here. Gets to his feet, Avery lying in wait as Reese Matthews at ringside cheering on his ally. Look at the choke, man. The big, meaty claws of Stalwart. You gotta be careful not to get disqualified right there. Now, well, Ugdorn guys, obviously, and I think rightfully, not happy with Reese Matthews putting his contract on the line in the hardcore war. 
Arguing and saying, you're supposed to lead me to my destiny. You're the Red Fox. And if I'm, my contract is given to Mr. Green, then my destiny is in jeopardy. Indeed, if Reese Matthews and co. cannot win the hardcore war, Ogbjorn going to be under the thumb of Mr. Green. Of course, building his legacy. And speaking of the devil, the Paragon of Prosperity distracting Nick Avery. And that allows Stalwart. Look at this. The vice grip squeezing the head of Avery. Trying to pop it like a balloon. Desperate to pick himself up here. Avery, though, trapped in the corner. Kick to the back of the knee. Oh, and a big boot. Stalwart is just a hard-hitting, mean son of a gun. You can see why Mr. Green would want him as his bodyguard. Not necessarily his butler, though. Again, I say, can you imagine Stalwart going around, cleaning the windows, doing the dishes? Well, with how much money Mr. Green pays him, I'm sure he does whatever Mr. Green wants. Avery's got him in the corner. Beautiful slice, bread. Grabbing those tree trunk legs. A dub. For the Spirit Walker, unfortunately not yet. And Ms. Stalwart gonna roll out the ringside. Avery dispersing first class with that corkscrew sense on. Almost took the ball out, man. Like bowling pins right there. Mr. Green getting up close here. I cannot get over that shirt. I'm gonna throw Stalwart right into bulk. Where do you get a shirt like that, man? My boy went thrifting. That's the type of shirt you find at a thrift shop, man. $5.99. Up to a count of seven here already, and Stalwart raking the eyes of Avery. Chasing after him. Slowly, he gets back into the ring. That's the only speed of Stalwart. Slow. Yeah, Versace. Maybe knockoff. Although, now that they're behind Mr. Green getting paid the big bucks, maybe. Someone get one of those... Uh, those little devices that scan chains. We gotta see if those chains are real. That Bolt Mogan's got. Little gem detector. Off the ropes. Oh, Star Wars. Look at the power, man. Choke slam and say goodnight, Nick Avery. No. Surprisingly, Avery keeping his head above the water. Just trying to desperately throw himself at Stalwart there. Tries for a stop. Avery. Right hook to the midsection. Doing all he can to turn things around here, but Stalwart using his power. Just beat the high holy hell out of the spirit walker here. Oh, another super kick. Avery flopping. Into the pin, he hooks that leg. No matter what he does, though, cannot keep Stalwart down. Gonna put him in the corner, then maybe. Looking for another rendition of sliced bread. Into the pin again. Oh, but Mr. Green distracting the referee now. One, two. And thanks to Mr. Green. Look at Nick Avery beside himself. He had the match won there and then some. Lord Buster. Uh, now a steel chair. Mr. Green, how many times is he going to get involved here? Ref, do something. Well, at least he's going to get rid of the chair. 
Stall work from the corner though. Setting up for that big boot. Take it off the head of Nick Gamer, but apparently that's not good enough. Into the corner, he sends him. Big back elbow. Stop to the gut. And again, but Avery's ready this time. Fires back to the kick of his own. Basement drop kick. Into the pin. He hooks the leg. Desperate here. The desperation almost pays off, but almost not going to be good enough. Nick Avery scrambling. Super kick doesn't even seize. Stalwart and another choke slam. One, two, three, stalwart for first class. Picks up the win and momentum going into the hardcore war at Ascendance 11. A valiant effort, but with Mr. Green continuously getting involved, this was essentially a guaranteed outcome here. The hardcore war awaits. First class against Reese Matthews and friends. Who emerges victorious at the show of shows. Coming up next, guys, we got some singles action as Yvonne Salvatore, fresh off of his tag team win alongside Tristan Parker last week here on Octane against the Long Island Dragons, one on one with August Sky here. And it looks like these two are becoming more than just one time allies. The social media sensation. And Salvatore striking an alliance, and it looks like Parker going to be at ringside for Sal here in this matchup. Both men, of course, 
scheduled to be a part of the Slit B Memorial Battle Royal at Ascendance 11. These two have a lot in common. They're both hot. And they know it too is the problem. Still to come here on this go home edition of Octane, my friends. Up next, we got Amelia Jones in action before the biggest matchup of her career at Ascendance 11, going one on one, of course, with Chloe Marks. In our coming event, we'll see Isaiah Matthews, fresh off his debut win last week, taking on Paul Divine. Huge step up in competition, but no doubt a big opportunity for Matthews. And then our main event, of course, that mixed tag team matchup. Going to see the global general, Chris Diamond and women's world champion, Ellie Quinn, take on Xiaorong and Leon Gada. Here, Ivan, or I should say Ivan, excuse me, don't want to get it wrong. Ivan Salvatore taking on August Sky, who's said to be a part of the Money in the Bank ladder match. At Ascendance 11. Looks like he's going to be flanked by his good friend Tommy Blaze. Also, along with Salvatore and Parker, a part of the Slick B Memorial Battle Royal. And I say again, I look forward to seeing what August Kai can do in the Money in the Bank ladder match. But Ron Salvatore comes straight forward and pays for it. Could it be that easy? Almost a two count. As Tristan Parker and Tommy Lays watch from ringside, Salvatore dragging. August Sky over to the ropes now gonna just throw him casually out onto the apron. Wait a minute. Wait a minute! Pile driver! Okay, Yvonne. Just decided to turn this up to ten. About a minute into the matchup. Luckily August Sky seems to have a neck of steel. It's dropped out of the outside. Oh and Yvonne! Did not come to play around here tonight. Tosses him back into the ring. Trying to stay on him, but August Sky back to his seat already. Launches him into the corner. European uppercut back elbow. Now setting up that Tiger faint kick, saying, How do you do to Tristan Parker before jumping back into the ring? Well, Yvonne catches him with a cheeky jab. Knight's reversal off the ropes. Beautiful disaster kick. Wrong time to celebrate, Parker. Stomp to the face. August Sky looks like he's setting up for something. A shining a wizard. And a chop kick to the bum. Making sure Yvonne doesn't get anywhere fast. Now a headbutt to where the sun don't shine to the nether region? Again? Unbelievable. That Money in the Bank ladder match, guys, not only like we talked about earlier, the most diverse Money in the Bank ladder match in CMB history. So many different styles going to collide. We know that all eight participants have never held either the Global Championship or the Undisputed World Heavyweight Championship. It'll truly be an opportunity for one of them to break the glass ceiling. Twist of fate leads to a two count only for Salvatore. He's not finished though. 
Gotta be going for the unprettier. August Sky keeps him back though. Knee to the jaw. Takes him out with a double knee face breaker. One, two. Salvatore, but barely survives. Needs to turn things around and he knows it. Both men a bit hesitant. That hesitance ends though. Salvatore, we've seen this a couple of times. That modified torture rack. Choking out August with his own arm. But he's able to escape, lands on his feet. Tilt the world, DDT! Oh, but look at this, the social media sensation not out here. Just to show support for his newfound ally. Distracting August Sky. Salvatore able to take back control. Punched in the back of the head, it wasn't a fan of that. Pulls him back into a knee right between the eyes. Lines him up for a bit of a rolling thunder. Not just once, but twice. Sky says, get me the hell out of here to the outside, but no safety to be had. Oh, side steps. Salvatore's attempted suicide dive. Tristan Parker watching closely but keeping his distance. Salvatore, the bigger man. Sends Sky back into the ring. Both these guys showcasing just how agile they are, though. Paradigm shift. Followed up by. Single underhook gut buster. Nevada is most certainly firmly in the driver's seat right now. And he's going to keep it that way. Another twist of fate. Well, that new sky in. Uno, dos, but no tres. Frustrated, but Tristan Parker cheering him on, telling him to stay focused, and nails the unprettier this time. Hooks the leg. One, two, three. Von Salvatore collects the dub. Nobody as pretty as Yvonne Salvatore. Another win for Salvatore with a little bit of help from the social media sensation in his corner. And both gonna be going into that Slick B Memorial Battle Royal with momentum on their side. This could be the start of a very lucrative partnership here between these two.
Into our tertiary main event we go here, lads and gents, on this go-home edition of Octane. And Amelia Jones, of course, preparing to meet Chloe Marks one-on-one -on -one at the show of shows. Going to be taking on an old foe here and Celestina Marquez. Chloe Marks thought she could make an easy target out of Amelia Jones. Use her as a stepping stone to elevate herself, but learned very quickly, just like Celestina Marquez did, that Amelia Jones is not one to be overlooked, not one to be taken advantage of. And at Ascendance 11, fixing to pay back for would-be bully. But momentum is what she's looking to grab here tonight. Last time these two faced off, the Women's Hardcore Championship was on the line. And despite a valiant effort, Jones came up short. Marquez fresh off her dominant win against Gianna earlier this week on Shockwave. And of course, heading into the Miss Magnificent 8 ladder match, the Muscle Mommy. Not looking to allow her momentum to be tarnished here at the hands of Amelia Jones. Of course, they're to come up next guys are covered event. Isaiah Matthews takes on Paul Devine. Before we get to our main event mixed tag team matchup, Chris Diamond and Ellie Quinn take it on Shaorong and Leon Gata. So here we go, Amelia Jones, Celestino Marquez, one on one. Both wanting to earn that momentum heading into Ascendance 11 as Jones gonna quickly throw Marquez to the outside. Oh, and catch it with a kick. Have a nice trip, see you next fall. Up next is the co-main event as Isaiah Matthews takes on Paul Fire. Our main event is that mixed tag team bout, champs versus challengers. You know, Chloe Marks, whose aggression has just, since the start of this new season, progressed to a whole new level. And I talked about it last week. Marks has truly become almost unrecognizable from the plucky rookie we once knew and loved. Her desire to make it to the top has sort of just taken over everything else and has made her borderline bloodthirsty. Look at Marquez with that Cravat sleeper gets out of it. There's Amelia Jones. Amelia Jones not going to be used as a launching pad for Chloe Marks. The biggest matchup of not just Amelia's career, Chloe's too. Opportunity to showcase themselves. The biggest show in CMB history. Oh, Amelia. Grabbing that bottom rope with about a millisecond to spare. Goes to the outside now. I see you, Amelia. Oh, but look behind you. Sleeper slam. I'd be muscle mommy. Along with seven others, competes in the Magnificent Eight ladder match. At Ascendance 11. Chance to climb that ladder, unhook that briefcase, and earn a shot at the Women's World Championship anytime, anywhere. Oh, Marquez showing off that impressive physique. Almost pays for it. Back elbow, second time. Why not a third? And down goes Jones. Now gonna try and Pull at the arm of Amelia. Attempting to rip it right off. Marquez certainly with the upper hand here starting to dominate.
Big forearm smash, knife edge chop, another forearm. There's the response of Elias looking for, tries to run to the ropes, but cut off. Oh, looping pulse strike. I think I just saw Amelia's soul leave her body there. Okay, is not looking to give her any opportunity to rest up. Elbow to the back of the head here at ringside. Into the ring, Jones is sent. Marquez not fixing to play around here. Jones is in rough shape and Marquez knows it. Slowly brings her to her feet. But Jones, perhaps playing possum, goes to the ropes this time. Oh, no. Misses the springboard drop kick and caught with that modified Russian leg sweep. One again, though. Able to grab the bottom rope. Celestina getting pissed off here. Jones, she's got that wherewithal. Oh, it's not going to help her here. Going for the backslide driver. Jones able to counter. Just to the chest. Down she goes. Jones has to act quickly. And she knows it. Looking for that pump handle driver. Some stops to follow it up. She's got the upper. Oh, wait a minute, though. Chloe Marks. Chloe Marks coming out here, or, or maybe not. Nowhere to be seen. Backslide driver from Marquez. One, two. Oh, but Jones kicks out. Amelia Jones had this match. One guy's had it in the bag, but Chloe Marks. Her music blaring over the PA system, enough to distract Amelia. Obviously, Mark's not content just watching from backstage, doing all she can to cost Jones this matchup. Hangman's face buster into the pin. One, two, three, and Jones! Despite the interference, Hangs tough and gets the win. Well, Amelia knew after almost getting screwed over following Chloe's distraction, she had to put Marquez away as quickly as possible. And she did a big win, a feel good win for Amelia Jones, putting down her old foe there. But is she ready for what is sure to be a tough battle against Chloe Marks out of sentence 11?
right, co-main event time here on Octane, episode of 53, my friends. And a big opportunity, no doubt about it, for Isaiah Matthews, who of course debuted successfully last week here on Octane, with a win against Gabriel Seto, a great matchup between those two. Matthews certainly putting on display what brought him to the dance. And no disrespect to Seto, but this is a huge step up in competition as Matthews here tonight takes on Hall of Famer Paul Devine. Now, it looks like Matthews going to have a guest at ringside, J.B. Hayes, of course, who is set to defend his NGW World Championship against Paul Devine at Ascendance 11. Seems like after that attack a couple of weeks ago, Hayes wanting to understandably keep a close eye on Devine. You'll recall a go after J.B. Hayes picked up a win, Paul Devine rushed the ring and using JB's own championship, hit him right upside the head. But Ryan obviously making it clear. Now, there is no respect to be had going into that championship bout at the show of shows. Desperate is the Hall of Famer to prove he can not only still hang with this new generation, but that he is better than all these young guns running around like Isaiah Matthews. But a win here will go a long way in boosting not only the morale of Isaiah Matthews, but boosting him up the rankings and certainly sending a message to the rest of that locker room. Now, he's no joke. But there he is. The Asian sensation. The man who puts the rising and rising sun. Japan's biggest export. The sixth time. CMB world champion. King of the Hill winner. Who, of course, chose out of every other championship in CMB to challenge for that NGW championship at Ascendance 11. And now he's got his date with J.B. Hayes. But here tonight, old Hayes watching from ringside as it's Matthews and Divine one-on-one -on -one here in our co-main event. Still to come up next, of course, that mixed tag team matchup seeing champs take on challengers. But here we go. The young rookie against the Hall of Famer. Matthews not looking to start out with a feeling out process. Comes out swinging, beautiful suplex. Hayes likes what he sees. Of course, guys, undefeated is J.B. Hayes. Unpinned, unsubmitted. Defending that NGW championship against arguably the greatest of all time at the biggest show in CMB history. And J.B. Hayes only been in CMB a few months. Think about that. Tries for a stop. This line caught, though, by Isaiah. Again, most certainly put on display what makes him unique. Last week in that win against Gabriel Sato. This is an impressive kid who I feel has a bright future here in CMB. He's going to be a part of that slick B Memorial Battle Royal. He's made it clear that he's confident he will emerge the victor. Got 19 other just as confident superstars, though, to contend with. Pinfall attempt by Devine. Gets only a two-count ripcord. Four on upside the head. Down he goes. It's JB. Out of action last week, thanks to that attack by Paul Devine. Imagine the disrespect of attacking your opponent, but then add to that a whole other layer using their own championship to attack them. Devine's got no respect for this new breed. He wants to prove that he is still the top of the food chain here in CMV. 
Grabs Isaiah by the hair. Going to drag him over to the ropes. Knee to the face. Alternating knees. Back and forth. Isaiah hanging on for dear life. Big boot. And down he goes to the outside. Divine now finished. Slingshot. Laying out. Matthews pops right back up. This young kid ain't... Keen on laying around, but Divine just meeting him around every corner. Takes a step back. Tornado DDT. Hall of Famer firmly planted in the driver's seat right now. Giving this kid all he can handle and then some. To the count of seven, Isaiah with the Tanahashi close line followed up by that drop kick to the side of the head. We are less than one week away, my fine feathered friends. This Thursday, the 28th, kicks off the three day extravaganza that is Ascendance 11. And right now, Isaiah Matthews about to get a bit of cheeky divine intervention, or maybe not. Escapes does he. Over the counter, the counter though, and Divine right back in control. Pop up, knee to the gun, kick right to the back of the head. Right into the pit, that's good enough for Divine. Front row seat for JB here, a kick out though by Mr. Matthews. Slowly brings him to his feet. European uppercut lying in wait, staggers Divine just a bit long enough to shoot. Low double leg takedown and a clothesline. Sheesh. Some real power behind that. Now look at this. A rear naked choke. Body scissors and all. Isaiah Matthews are going to put the body to sleep here. But the Asian sensation back to his feet. Got to act quickly. Freeze and shatter. In trouble right now is Divine. The young rookie knows it takes a step back, knee to the jaw. Out like the light is divine. One, two. On the verge of a monumental win. But divine not going to make it so easy. Four on the back of the head, keeping the pressure on. Going to go for the pin again. JB's hyped up. One, only a one count this time. Isaiah looking back like, you kidding me? Divine pops back to his feet, instantly put right back down with that Superman forearm smash. He's in the bridge, knows Divine trying to get the hell out of here. Vintage Borton combo. Isaiah all over Divine right now like peanut butter on jelly. But in an instant, Divine turns it around, suplex cutter. Done this Matthews, and that's good enough for Divine. Gonna go for Divine Intervention again. And this time, there's no escape for Isaiah Matthews. Not finished. Sets him up. Knee up front of the jaw. Tries for a drop kick. Matthews gets out of the way. Off the ropes he goes. DDT. So quick is this kid. A desperate pin though. One, two. Divine to his feet. Pulled into a DDT. Skull crack, but Divine continues to fight back to his feet. Punch the midsection. Counter for counter here between these two. Rookie versus veteran. German suplex, double boot stop. Another vintage Morton combo. Yes, sir, indeed. Walking him into the corner for a good old snake eyes. Trying to use his environment at this point to wear down Paul Divine. Nothing else has worked. Now we got a cross. Lake and sort of fisherman's Mishinoku driver. I don't even know what to call that. Amalgamation of a few different maneuvers there. 
Couple of elbows to the gut. Divine finds himself with some room to move here. Full arm smash and again, the catchphrase. Down goes Isaiah, backs into the corner. The kid's still moving though. Divine takes a step back. 24 punch. One, two. But the kid's got a jaw of steel. Survives this Isaiah, much to the chagrin of Divine, who goes for Divine intervention again. Matthews counters it though. Elbow to the jaw. Back and forth, back and forth. Oh, another knee! Another knee flips him over, hooks the leg. One, but a rope break. A Hall of Famer knows where he is. He's got that wherewithal. None too happy, but Isaiah stays on the attack with Divine Hurton. Once more, that clothesline into the pin. One, ref. One, two, three, Isaiah. Isaiah Matthews with, with, not, with what not can be understated. A huge win here. Defeating the sixth time and potentially soon to be seven time CMV world champion. Not good for Divine's momentum going into Ascendance 11, but certainly good for Isaiah Matthews and good for JB Hayes as well. Mum 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 main event time here on Octane episode 53, my friends. Mixed tag team action coming our way. As it's the champs versus the challengers. The global general Chris Diamond 
poised to defend that championship of his against Leon Gara at Ascendance 11. That's day one, that championship match. This upcoming Thursday, the 28th, live from his home country of London, England, in front of his friends, his family, in the O2 Arena. One of the biggest matches of Chris Diamond's career. But here tonight teams up with women's world champion LA Quinn for this mixed tag team bout. Less than a week, Diamond will be holding up that championship in front of thousands and thousands in the O2 Arena. Question is, will he be leaving the O2 Arena with that championship still in hand? The same question can be asked for Ellie Quinn, set to defend her beloved Women's World Championship against either Ashley Riot or Shao Rong. We still do not know, guys, because on day one, it will be Riot versus Rong in that no holds barred match with the winner moving on to main event. Day two, challenging Ellie Quinn for the championship. But Ellie Quinn says it doesn't matter if it's Ashley Riot, if it's Shao Rong. Whomever steps up will be stepped on as the main attraction becomes the first woman in CMB history to main event ascendance. She walked into Ascendance 10 as champion, but did not leave the same. Looking to rewrite that wrong this time around. As she walks into Ascendance 11 with the championship. And looks to leave the same way. Our champions, Chris Diamond and Ellie Quinn. But will they be for much longer? Leon Gata, a year removed from the worst moment of his life at Ascendance Tent, losing his mask to Danger Cat. And look at where he is now. Look at what a year can do, man. Leon Gata picked himself up, and it wasn't easy this past year. Faltered many times. Came close on multiple occasions, including back at Mob Violence challenging Chris Diamond for the Undisputed World Heavyweight Championship. Obviously coming up short on that night, but did he quit? No, he did not. And Leon Gata back at Purgatory emerging victorious from the Elimination Chamber to earn his shot at Chris Diamond and the Global Championship. Just as Shao Rong looks to earn her shot, technically she already did. She won the Women's Elimination Chamber match at Purgatory, but decided to put her shot on the line to get hands on Ashley Riot at Ascendance 11. Day one, this upcoming Thursday, Riot, Rom, no holds barred. The winner goes on to challenge Ellie Quinn for the Women's World Championship in the main event of night two.
Chow Rong has a bucket list. Knowing that her time left within that squared circle is only getting shorter and shorter. And at the top of that bucket list is winning the Women's World Championship. A bell rings and here we go with our mixed tag team bout. The fella's gonna kick it off. Diamond and Gata here. Diamond looking confused as to where he wants to take Gata. And pays for it with some elbows to the midsection off the ropes. Goes the golden line with a beautiful drop kick to the chest. Seems like Gata just keeps coming around to Diamond, man. As the months go on and on. Diamond is that man at the top of the mountain. Gata making the climb. He's slipped and he's fallen multiple times. But now he's reached the top. He's right there. And all he's got to do is finally beat Chris Diamond for that global championship at Ascendance 11. Big old swinging side slam by Xiao Rong as, of course, the women are now in. Obviously, the men fight the men here. The women fight the women in a preview of what we very well might see coming our way at Ascendance 11, day two, if Xiao Rong can defeat Ashley Ryan on day one. Off the rope, she's set, tries for a high knee, blocked by Xiao Rong. Kick right to the gut. And a knee to the face. Just for good measure, as the tag is made to Gata, so in comes Diamond. Right over DDT, spiking Gata. Pops right back up, though, tries for a clothesline. Gata ducks it. Short on drop kick. Diamond is not seen too keen on partaking in this matchup, making another tag to Ellen Quinn. Doesn't pull any punches, sending Shao into the corner. Good God. I felt that chop to the chest. Sheesh. Grabs the arm. Ooh. Kind of kick to the gut that'll suck the air right up out of you. Tag made to Gata. As much as Diamond doesn't want to partake in this matchup, he has to when the tag is made. Got it to the outside. A picture perfect drop kick doesn't stop there. Slingshot forearm smash. Lang got out. Diamond walks into a sentence 11 guys with the home field advantage. He's going to have his friends, his family there in the front row cheering him on. Got a nose. He's walking into hostile territory. He's looking to walk out with the global championship and that will make everything worth it springboard draw kick diamond scrambles has got it makes that tag to show irish whip sends her off the ropes drops down to quinn and again catches on the rebound oh full nelson slam Grabs the leg for a pin attempt. The one count is all she gets, though. <laughs> Excuse me. Grab a sip of my W real quick. Ah, so refreshing. Promo code CMB23 at checkout when you go to W.GG. Save 10% on your purchase. Close. Call right there. Tag to Leon Gata. Runs right into a kick by Diamond. Quick to scurry to the outside. Diamond! <laughs> Feeling especially froggy here tonight. Throws caution to win, but it does not pay off for him there. Another short arm drop kick. It's five years ago. At Ascendant 6. That we were last. In the UK. For the show of shows. And on that night. Chris Diamond walked into Hell in a Cell. 
against PJ Mood. Fast forward all these years later, and the British baller comes home with the global championship around his waist. Chow Rong lining up with one of those vicious knees here. Explodes out of the corner. Quinn sleeping with the fishes here. One, two, but kicks out on her own. I'm making a beeline for Gata just in case. Speaking of the tag is made and come the fellers. This time Gata acts first. But a Karana but diamond to the outside. Leon Gata giving chase. Ellie Quinn running away from Shaorong. Wanting nothing to do with the Empress. DDT. Onto the floor up to a count of three as around we go for the head scissors whip. Throws him into the barricade, Gata. Not holding anything back as he at last takes the fight back into the ring. To the top rope, maybe. Thinking about the shooting star press, but Diamond gets to his seat, has to act quick, counter. By Diamond turning into a power bomb. He's got a host of refuge in the corner. He ain't gonna find it as Diamond unloads with a buckle bomb. Slaps hands with Ellie Quinn. The women are now legal. Chow Rong attempts to charge the main attraction. Sends her off the ropes. Another full Nelson slam. Tags Diamond, right back in. Not a wait for him, another boots the face. Bigley sends him into the corner, Gata. Ooh, nice! Head scissors whip there, an Astro whip. Doesn't keep Diamond down for all that long, but Gata is able to fight out of his clutches. Has him in the corner again. This time, head scissors whip. Into the pin, one. That's all Gata's gonna get. It's gonna take much more than that to put down the British baller. Crucifix driver. Diamond says, see you bye. Drop into the outside, trying to pick himself up, but Gata. Right there to greet him. Ain't no rest for the wicked. Diamond's got the upper hand, trying for a brain buster. Maybe Gata gets free. Shot to the back of the leg. Attempts a wheelbarrow, but Diamond catches him with a knee. Just the count of five. Diamond back in. Gata lying in wait, another crucifix driver. A knee right to the jaw. Not a very aggressive in this matchup. Forcing Diamond to kiss the canvas repeatedly. My God! Gata has become unglued here. You can't say Diamond doesn't deserve it. Gets to his feet, but God is right there. And the golden spike. Laying out the global head and out. Ellie Quinn making the save before there's even a one count, though. Diamond just in a world of trouble. Leon got a relentless. At last makes the tag. Chris Diamond breathing a sigh of relief as he rolls to the outside. And while Ellie Quinn picking herself up on the apron, Chowrong staying on the attack though, knocks her to the outside with that kick upside the head. Oh, Ellie Quinn taking advantage of Chowrong, exited the ring and stomped to the shoulder.
count of four, the fight resumes in the squared circle, and Ellie Quinn! Oh, swinging neck break, you see the velocity! One, two! Not enough though, frustrated as the women's world champion here. Try and drag Shao Rong into the corner. A little bit too much of a walk, though, and Shao Rong given the opportunity to escape. Into the ropes on the rebound. Tries for a back elbow, maybe. Pinfall attempt. Gets a one count. Shao Rong has worked too hard has come back from career-ending injuries multiple times in her CMB career to at last make it to this moment. But the story hasn't ended yet. There's still a roadblock in the form of Ashley Bryant. And even if Shao Rung is able to get past the Deathmatch Princess, then the main attraction will still be waiting for her. Can Shao Rong finish the story at Ascendance 11? Now gonna get a bit cheeky. Playing with Ellie Quinn here in the corner, stomp to the chest. Stiff kick to the middle of the back, stomp to the head. Quinn decides to shoot across the ring, tag the diamond. Meeting up with Leon Gata, who strikes first. Backpack face buster. Quick to his feet. Back to the mat, there is Gata, it's just quicker. Nice reflexes there by Diamond, 1916. Coming out of nowhere. One, two. Doesn't get the job done though. Frantic as Diamond here. <laughs> Gonna put him in the corner. And surely can only be looking for a quick donation. Break your neck foundation. Grabs the leg. Uno. Dos. But no tres gotta. Kicking out. Not having his diamond, puts him right back into the corner. Could be looking for it again. He is. Well, if one ain't enough, break the neck foundation a second time. Running into the pin. One, but a breakup by Shao Rong. Serious pain right now, I'm sure, as Leon got it. Look at this diamond continuing to go after the head. Trying to crack open the skull like a coconut. But Gata back on top. And immediately some more punches to the side of the head. Leg drop to the extended arm. Going to utilize that backpack face buster. One more time, Diamond. Attempting to... Get to his feet, find some way to counter the speed of Leon Gara. He's found his way, making the tag. In comes Ellie Quinn. Caught though. With that discus double axe handle. Now some sharp knees right to the side of the head. Ellie Quinn out of instinct. Paw back up to her feet though. Able to fire off that punch to the gut. Enough to send Rong off the ropes. Yet another full Nelson slam. Shao Rong though, determined here. Oh, fuck! Discus knife edge chop caught it right across the face. Now Shao continuing to play games with Ellie Quinn. From the corner, looking for another roaring knee. Close range this time. Lights out for the women's world champion. One, two. 
Greg kicks out. What happens when you put the champs against the challengers, man? Shout Rock's not finished, though. Stacks her up. Diamond. Diamond. Diamond not going to try to make the save. Goes after Gata. Doesn't give a shit about Ali Quinn. Instead attacks Gata when he very easily could have broken up the pin. Oh, Diamond proving right there what we all know. He's in it for himself and himself alone. Always has been. Xiao Rong and Leon Gata victorious in this mixed tag. And now, my friends, we look towards Ascendance 11. The three-day event begins this Thursday, the 28th, with a stack day one. Do not miss it. Until then, I'll see you when I see you.